my name is Ryan Schmaltz and I am going to do a hooked on fishing activity with you guys today. And this activity is called Fish Math. It covers what fisheries biologists do and we'll walk through the process of doing a population estimation just like they would do on your local river or pond. So what we're going to do first before starting the activity is cover some things that we think everyone should know about fish in Montana. One thing that we think everyone should know about fish in Montana is what the state fish of Montana is. So the state fish of Montana is right here. It's the cutthroat trout. So we have the cutthroat trout right here and you can see under its mouth, it has this red slash mark and it's a native fish of Montana. So the second fish that everyone should know is the most common fish to catch during the summer months in Montana. Maybe you've caught one and people come from all over the country to catch them. It's right here, there's a rainbow trout. The rainbow trout's an introduced species and you can see it has these little black dots all over its body in colorful pinks and greens and golds. All right, the most popular fish to catch during the winter time in Montana is the perch. And I have a perch right here. And most folks, when they're out fishing for a perch, they're ice fishing in the winter. So the yellow perch is right here. And the most common question that we get while doing education programs about fish is what's the biggest fish in Montana? Well, the biggest fish is uh, right here. It's a paddlefish. So the paddlefish is the largest fish ever caught by an angler in Montana. And the largest paddlefish ever caught was 142 and a half pounds. So those are the things that we think everyone should know about fish. Now it's time to jump into this activity. And this is my friend, Adam Strainer. He's a fisheries biologist and a friend of mine, and he's doing fish math in a place that you wouldn't think about doing math. He's in the, the snow, the cold, and the rain, and the dark, and he's working through some fish math right now. So what do fisheries biologists do? Well, you, we can break their jobs down into three main parts. That's working with management, research, and habitat. So we're gonna cover each of those real quick. So fisheries management. You would think that biologists spend all their time working with fish, right? Well, that's not true. They actually spend a lot of time in working with, what do you think? People, people. If you ask a fisheries biologist what is the most important part of their job, many times they'll answer it's working well with people and others, so very important. Second part of their jobs, researching or studying fish. This is probably the most fun part of their job. They get to go out in the boat, they're actually handling fish, but everything that they do, they use two things, and those two things are school subjects that you do every single day. What's one, do you think? It's math. They use math all the time. What's another one? It's science. So they use math and science to figure everything out as fisheries biologists. The third part of their job is working with habitat. You've probably talked about this since you were real young in school, but we can break habitat down into four parts. There's four elements to a habitat. One part starts with an F, and that's food. The other part starts with a W, and that's water. The other the last two are with S's, and that's shelter and space. So the four parts of a habitat are food, water, shelter, and space. And it's important that a biologist monitors those things and makes sure that fish have correct amounts of that. So a fisheries biologist's job of looking at a population, figuring out how many fish are out there, is very different than a wildlife biologist. A wildlife biologist, many times they can go to where an animal winters, like this animal right here, which is a elk and they could fly over the area with a helicopter and airplane and it'll do what's called a census. That's a count. So they'll basically look down and they'll count, and you can see here, how many bulls, cows, and calves are out there, and that's how they come up with their, their population numbers. Well, fisheries biologists, could we walk to a stream or a river and look in there and then just see how many fish there are? No, we couldn't do that. How about fly a drone over and count how many fish are in a creek, a river, or lake? It's not possible. Or flying an airplane or a helicopter. We, we couldn't fly over and count how many fish are there, so we have to do something different. What do you think a fisheries biologist has to do? Well, they have to capture the fish somehow. It's probably different than you think of going and catching fish, but one way that they'll go and capture fish is by using something called a seine. It's a net that they'll drag through the, the water, typically to catch smaller fish in shallow water, pull it up towards shore, and then they'll scoop those fish up, take a look, and put them back. Another way is to use a gill net. A gill net's a clear net, the fish can't see it, they swim into the net, they get stuck, 
and they'll pull in this net and take out the fish uh, to study. So the third way is electrofishing. You can see that they have a backpack here that they're wearing. A special backpack puts electricity through that wand into the water. And you can see the biologists are wearing rubber boots and waders, so they're not affected by the electricity. But the fish, when they swim by, what happens is they get stunned. So they'll, their muscles will tense up. And for a split second, the biologist has a chance to try to scoop that fish up and they'll put it in a holding tank to, to study that fish. But some places it's just too deep to walk up and down this backpack. So they'll use a boat like this. This is an electrofishing boat and they'll take the boat down the river and you can see the fish, they get stunned for just a split second. The biologist will scoop those fish up. They'll put them in a holding tank uh, to study them. And then in this next slide here, you can see that we have a population. This is all of the fish in a river right here, every single one of them. So if we took nets and we went out to a lake and we captured fish for one day, are we going to catch all of the fish in the lake? No, there's no possible way. So what we'll end up with is a sample. We'll just catch some of those fish that are out there. But what if we went electrofishing down a creek or a river? Would we catch every single fish in the creek or river? Not a chance. Uh, you'll just get some, you'll get a sample. It looks just like this. So you'll see in the newspaper each year, uh, articles like this. It says fisheries biologists estimate there was over 2000 trout per mile in this river. Does that mean they captured over 2000 fish in a mile? when they were, were electrofishing? Think about it. Or esti it says they estimate. Does that mean they guessed? No. What two things do they use to figure everything out as a fisheries biologist? We mentioned them earlier. That's right, it's math and science. They used math and science to come up with this population estimation. We're gonna show you how this happens right here. So you can see this is a, a fake river. What we're gonna do is we're gonna electrofish down the river. We'll electrofish all the way to the end, capture as many fish as we can, and then we'll put them in this holding tank. When the fish are in the holding tank, what we need to do is we need to mark them, just like the survey says. Well, probably the most common way that a fisheries biologist will mark a fish, they'll take a fish and they'll take a hole punch and they'll punch a hole in its tail fin, just like that. So maybe that seems cruel, but if you take a look at your fingernails, look at your fingernails real quick. So when you clip your fingernails, they grow back, they sure do, it takes um, you know, a little while, but it takes a couple weeks and a fish's little hole in his fin will grow back over. Uh, does it hurt when you clip your fingernails? It shouldn't if you're doing it right. And I don't think it really bothers the fish too much either. And does it affect the way you bounce a basketball or write with a pencil when you clip your fingernails? And they've done studies with fish and found that uh, this little mark that they put in the fish doesn't affect the way uh, that they, they swim or things that they do too. So now what we're gonna do is take all those fish in the holding tank, we're gonna put them back into the river. So we release them all unharmed back into the river. And then what we're going to do is wait a couple days, we'll come back, we'll electrofish down the river, do the exact same thing, exactly the same way. And we'll talk about this later. We'll put them in the holding tank and then the fish that we have in the holding tank, if we take a look at them, are all of those fish going to have marks on them? There's no way, right? Because we talked about earlier, a sample is just a part of that population. So when we look in the tank, hopefully we have a few that are marked, but we'll probably have many fish that aren't. So what we'll do then is we're going to use a math called statistics that we're gonna dive into here soon to figure out how many fish are in this population. I'm gonna walk you through the supplies and how to use them. And this activity targets what fisheries biologists do and how they estimate populations of fish throughout Montana. All right, now we're gonna take a closer look at the materials that you need for this activity. The most important is a jar. Uh, you can get a jar like this at many container stores, or you maybe can find something like this around your house. But the size is really important as far as your hand and scooping out of the jar. You're looking for a jar that is three and a half inches deep and roughly two and a half inches wide. The next thing that you're going to need are lima beans, and you're going to need the large lima beans. That's important for this activity too. Then each student is going to need a calculator and a Sharpie marker, and we will have a data sheet attached in a link with this uh, video that you can download and use for this activity. All right, let's get started with the activity. The first step is to establish groups with your students, which can be up to three students in a group, 
or as little as just one person doing each one of these surveys. And that's what we're gonna do here. You can see that we have Dave, Joe, Katie, Leslie, Brian, and Ryan. So we have two, three, four, five, six. We have six people doing this survey. Each person can handle about a mile of river. Well, in this case, we're gonna use our imaginations and a mile of river is this jar. The jar is one mile of river. And so I'm gonna take the lid off the jar and you can see inside the jar we have fish and those are actually lima beans. So every jar has about this many lima beans in it. I have no clue how many are actually in there. So we have one mile here. Now we have two miles, three miles, four miles, five miles, six miles right here. So now you're gonna take a look at the data sheet that you downloaded and you're going to take a look at the black box that says guess. In that black box that says guess, what I want you to do is just take a guess. How many fish you think live in all six miles of this river? You only need a few seconds to do that. All right, so it's just a guess. There's no right or wrong answer, but it's something we'll refer back to in the end of this exercise to point out the importance of math and science. So, all right. First sample. So what we're going to do here, if you take a look, that's the first white box. Your data sheet is basically recreated on this whiteboard here and we're gonna walk through this together. So here's what the first sample is going to look like. You're gonna take the jar and you're gonna open it up like this and you're going to take a scoop out of the jar. All right, before we take the scoop out of the jar, we have an important number. That important number is 16. That's going to be our, our confidence interval. That means for all this to work, we need at least 16 fish in this sample. So we're going to go ahead and take a scoop out of the jar. It's important that the jar stay flat on your desk though, because if you tilt it like this and scoop, you're going to catch all of the fish in the river. And can biologists catch all the fish in the river? No, they can't. So. You put the jar flat, take your hands, scoop into the jar, pull them out, put them on your desk. And you count them up and let's say that we got 14. We count 14 beans, is that at least 16 fish? No, it's not. So what we're gonna to have to do is resample. We'll put those beans back into the jar. Do you think that happens to biologists sometimes where they don't capture as many fish as they need? Well, it does sometimes. So you're gonna go ahead, take your hands, scoop out of the jar, put the beans on your desk and count them up. And you got 20, so we have 20 fish right here. Is that at least 16? Sure it is. So now you're going to leave your beans on your desk. So you have to leave your beans on your desk. What we're going to do then is you'll count up those beans that you've got in your scoop and we'll put that in the first sample. So you guys go ahead and take that scoop and we'll record them on the board. All right, so Dave, how many did you get? 18, all right, so Dave got 18 fish. Joe, how many fish did you catch? 24. All right, Katie, 16. Leslie, 31. All right, Brian, 26. And I got 20. Perfect. All right, so that's our first sample right there. Next thing, we'll look at our beans that we have here on our desk. And what we need to do is mark those fish. So if we take a look at our fish, it's a bean, it has no tail. We can't do a fin clip, so we have to get creative. What we are going to do is we'll take a marker and what we're going to do is we're gonna put an X on one side of the fish, nice big X, and then we're gonna flip it around and put a X on the other side of the fish. So that means we have how many X's on each side of the bean? One, and how many X's on the whole bean? Is two, so whatever side it lands on when we sample, we'll, we'll spot that. So we'll go through and we will mark each side of the bean now. All right, now that we have all of our beans marked, we're gonna take those beans, put them back into the river. So our fish go back into the river. And then you're going to put the lid of each jar on tight. All right, the next step here, and this happens when we go electrofishing, we capture all these fish all in one group and then we release them. And do they all stay in one spot? No, they end up going to back wherever they preferred in the habitat and how we're going to help them get back to their homes is we're gonna tumble them, not shake them. If we shook the jars real hard, 
uh, what would happen is you break the beans and then you'd kill the fish. Everything we do as fisheries biologists is to help the fish. So instead, you want to tumble the fish. It looks more like this. So roll it, flip it upside down, and help the fish get back to their home. All right. So now we're going to do is put your jar back on your desk, and we are going to work on sample two. So here's what sample two is, is going to be like. Last time, we had to catch how many fish? 16. All right. So that rule still stands the second time, but now we're inserting another rule, another confidence interval, is we need at least three recaptures. So that's three fish that still have X's on them. So I'm going to walk you through a word problem real quick. So you take your scoop, you put it on the, the table here, and you get 20 fish. And you look in there, and two of them have X's. Does that mean the, third, the second rule of catching at least three recaptures? No, it doesn't. So then you have to take all the fish, put them back in the jar, put the lid back on, tumble them again, and this time you take the scoop out, and let's say you get 18. Does that meet the first rule? Sure it does, so catching at least 16 fish. And you look in there, and there's four with excess. Does that meet the second rule? Sure does. So then you'd leave those beans on your desk, and you count up all of the beans marked and unmarked, and we're gonna put that number in second sample. So I'll go ahead and take my sample, and you can go ahead and take yours now too. Put it on my desk, count them up here. I got 19 fish, I'll write that down here. Dave, how many did you get? Dave got 21, and Joe, how many did you get? 28, all right, and Katie, how many did you get? 19. All right, Leslie got 28. All right, and Brian, 24. All right, great, that's our second sample now. So the next thing that we need to do is the math. So what we are going to do is we are going to take whatever you got in your first sample, and we're going to multiply that by what you got in your second sample, and that's gonna equal what you got in your workspace. All right, so Dave, you wanna do the math real quick on your calculator? All right, what'd you get, Dave? You got 378. All right, Joe, what did you get? 672. All right, Katie, 304. All right, Leslie, you got 868. All right. And Brian, 624. And since I'm gonna do my math real quick, I got, all right, 380. Perfect. All right, the next step is recaptured fish. So we're gonna take a look at the beans that we have laying on our desk and simply just count how many X's were in that sample and record it on the board. So go ahead and do that yourself now. All right, Dave, how many did you get? four. All right. And Joe, it's got five. And Katie, three. And Leslie, six. Brian, it's got five. And I have three. So more math now. And what we need to do is take whatever you got in the workspace. So you're going to take that and you're going to divide that number by the number of recaptured fish and that's going to equal your population estimation. So go ahead and do that math right now, taking whatever's in your workspace, divided by the number of your recaptured fish, and that will be your population estimation. You'll probably get a, a decimal. Uh, we're going to round down. If you have 0.243 of a fish, it's just the part of a fish, uh, we want to round down so we have a whole fish. All right, Dave, how many did you get? Dave's got 94, all right, and Joe, you have 134, all right, Katie, 101, and Leslie, 144, and Brian, he's got 124, all right, and I got 126, all right. So that is our population estimation based on math and science. So what would we do to figure out how many fish were all six miles of river? Well, we'd simply just have to add all of these numbers together. So 
Quickly add those up on your calculators and we'll record that number. All right, got it right away. Number is 723, so you have 723 fish. There's a box on your data sheet and that box is labeled class population estimation. The answer to that is 723. All right, so the last thing that we have left here is this fish census. Well, what, what was a fish census or a census is a count, right? So as fisheries biologists, we couldn't go out and count all the fish. That's why we had to go out and capture some fish and do all this math to come up with a population estimation. But because we're just pretending, we actually can do a fish census. And what we need to do to complete the fish census is count all of the fish in this jar right here. All right, to count them, I know how many are in my second sample. I have 19 right here, and I'm gonna dump out the rest of the jar and go through and count how many fish I have. So I got 121 fish. Dave, how many did you get? It's got 125. Joe, 130. And Katie, 122. And Leslie, 133. And Brian, it's got 134. So just like last time, count all those up and that will be our class fish census for six miles. That'll be how many fish we have in six miles. So what'd you guys get? All right, I got 765. That is your class fish census. So another thing that we can do is take a look at this like we talked about earlier. You might see in the newspaper how many fish per mile are in a river. Uh, we could divide, you could take and divide 723 by what number? Six, and we get 120. And we can take 765 and divide that by six and you'll get 127. So our population estimation you can see here, is pretty close and both per mile and for the whole river. But in school, many times you get graded, right? You get a percentage and a, a grade uh, letter. So let's take a look at this in that sort of way. Let's take 723, 723 divided by 765, and you get a decimal, and it's 0 0.945. So if we round it up, move the decimal two spots, that would mean we were 95% accurate at figuring out how many fish were in all six miles of the river in this sample. So this is how biologists do a population estimation, and it's just one of the many tools that they have in their toolbox to help manage fish populations throughout Montana. So I hope you enjoyed this and have a little better understanding how Fish, Wildlife, and Parks uses math and science to manage our fish populations and a closer look into what fisheries biologists do. Thanks for doing fish math.